the rain and wind really blew it apart. Doesn't help with the rain anymore, but even damaged. It's uh, a shield from the sun while this is worked on. I'm going to have to remove that. Uh, some of the piping for the power steering. And this left mount here. We do have the uh, slingers I made. In place. I took off the covers so that they wouldn't crack from the chain. So I'm hoping to have this separated today. It's incredibly complex. Probably going to have to separate that piece right there, which is for the rear wheel drive. And the front wheel drive is already kind of separated, but that needs to come out. Well, here's the state of the art on the Murano engine swap project. We moved our uh, small block Chevrolet on the engine test stand in further. Had to do some things with the casters not being proper. Uh, it's not that great, the small ones either, but at least they were able to move forward. The other ones are just too uh, flexible with the weight. Anyway, swapping some parts off the uh, old engine onto the new one. There's the old engine. It's out. It was actually finally separated from the transaxle. What a job. It's incredible. You have to take apart so much. And now we're busy use this chain to do it. This and this apparatus on the on the hoist which allowed us to reach low enough with this tall uh, upright. Anyway so I also modified the wood stand to better fit the ATV lift and uh, so swapping over different parts like the oxygen sensor and pieces off this broken uh, half part of the engine. So this is a new engine or the junkyard $1200 special. So we have to swap different things over because they cut pieces off of it and they broke things so we're taking them off of the other engine. So that's where we are right now and uh, we got in the brand new spark plugs for this Chevelle as well as new plug wires so we'll be changing that as well. Rainy day. What I'm doing is uh, adding some bolts so that we can roll around the subframe for the Murano. So the back two I already did. But it turns out the front ones take a slightly narrower bolt. So I have to grind down the bolts 
to fit. casters with the wheels so there's one being done here anyhow I'll show you what happens after I welded these together I didn't realize that the uh, the ones in the front require a longer so I welded this smaller bolt onto there so we can put it on using those. So that's how we managed to get it going. There it is on the other side there. So this, it only came up part base through there. This one's deeper. Okay. The idea of having the heavy duty casters on here is that once the engine is replaced there, it will be a lot easier to roll it back underneath the car without elevating the car body as much, since that's much lower. than what we used before, which is this wood and ATV lift. So that's that's pretty high. I also fabricated these uh, pliers by grinding them narrower. And the reason for that is to allow working with these connectors in a better way. So you can actually pull them off. I'm leaving the uh, ones that were cut mostly on so you can re-identify them when the engine goes back in. And hopefully that engine will be headed into this space as long as it stays dry. <laughs> 